You want jihad, we got it here, but no one really wants it near. It should be gone from the world entire before it sets us all on fire. But since we see it every day, David Wood is here to explain it away. David, welcome. This is This Week in Jihad. Welcome, all of you. Apologies for being late. Once again, the djinn tried to impede the broadcast, but they failed. Allah is the best of schemers, but we were able to scheme a way around the technical difficulties and get here, albeit a bit late. So, welcome, David, and thank you. Uh, we had to mess around with some stuff to get this uh, working. It was all on my end for some reason. I don't. Uh, am am I loud enough? Because I pushed everything farther away. Because uh, switch cameras. So yeah, seems to be. Uh, let us know, folks. But I just want to say that this right here, probably Spencer is pushing the wrong buttons for once. That is not the case. This was just purely the gin, ladies and gentlemen. It was yeah. not me. Yeah, Robert's a professional button pusher. <laughs> you are correct, sir. Anyway, uh, we've got a lot of jihad this week, so we'll dive right in. Uh, big story out of Spain, breaking right now. And what we have, David, is a... Uh, uh, what, what, one second, just for people who are confused, Black Angel says, why is my camera so bad? Because... We do, we have no idea why the audio wasn't working properly, but when I just unplugged my camera, uh, it worked. So now I'm on a garbage uh, camera that just comes with the laptop sticking in the laptop. So I, I unhooked my good camera, but it's good sound. It, the sound problem is fixed. And as you all know, sound is way more important. It's, you, keep in mind, you could have a beautiful picture of me and horrible audio. That would be a horrible show. So since David is kind of the Elvis of uh, it, of Islam critics, I know that there are many, many young ladies who are very desperately disappointed by the uh, poor quality of David's camera tonight, and we apologize for that. But uh, you can stare at your David Wood posters as he speaks, and uh, we'll try to make up for the, the lost aspects of the experience. Thank you very much. <laughs> Anyway, uh, now we have Spain. And in Spain, in Algeciras, a, uh, a gentleman from Morocco, uh, I bet, David, that once again, you have a pretty good idea of what he was yelling. Uh, uh, something about Allah, Allahu Akbar, or something in that ballpark. It was, can't we all just get along? Uh, actually. Peace, peace, peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Yes, yes. <laughs> Love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you, that sort of thing. God bless us, everyone, and Tiny Tim. Uh, in any case, no, he was indeed screaming Allahu Akbar. And he went to several churches. Those were his targets. So the... Uh, the very, very astute Spanish authorities are considering the possibility that this might have been a terror attack because you have a Muslim screaming Allahu Akbar going into several churches. They're leaving other possibilities open, David. I don't want you to think that they're That's racist. good. That's good. We don't want to have any Islamophobia here. But uh, in any case, in all seriousness, he... He uh, went in, he was wielding a machete, as is the custom these days, and he murdered a sacristan, he seriously injured a priest and three other people. He actually entered several churches. Yes, that's right, Black Angel. He entered several churches, and uh, they're still not sure that this has anything to do with Islam. What on earth would make a Muslim want to attack people in churches, David? Why would that happen? I, I was told it was a religion of peace. Uh, yeah, so you'd think it would be some sort of interfaith dialogue or maybe inviting people to work out because that's what jihad is. Uh, but people don't understand, like, we, we, we've at, as much as we talk about jihad, we've actually got it pretty good in the United States. Um, last week... 
uh, as we have before. We talked a bit about Nigeria being one of those places that's on the dividing line. Um, in other words, you have you know Muslim dominance on one side of the line and non-Muslim uh, non-Muslim Christians in this case on the other side. Similar situation in in India and so on. That these are the dividing lines, and so those places are always going to be targeted by jihadis because they want to keep pushing the line further and further, thus expanding Islamic domains. But places like Spain, that's in the same category with Israel in, in that there's another reason to target to target the country, namely is Muslims once controlled it and therefore uh, their leaders interpret, drive them out from whence they drove you out as applying in this situation. So they actually have it in a more dangerous situation in that there are people who just believe that you are under constant jihad. You, you have to be constantly attacked. And if you're, you're Christians, well, that's just a double whammy right there. Christian mm -hmm. churches and you're in Spain, which is a target, in, in an ongoing target. And so uh, God has sucked. So as much as we much as we talk about, you know, how bad things are in the U.S., we're mainly usually talking about like politicians and journalists being stupid. Um, whereas other parts of the world, they got it a bit worse. They, I mean, it, it, it must really suck not being able to go to church without being hacked up. Yes, indeed. But the principle is very clearly enunciated in the Quran, chapter 2, verse 191. You can consult your copy of the critical Quran and check this out. It's a very simple situation. Drive them out from where they drove you out. And so the uh, uh, jihadis like this fellow in Algeciras believes that the uh, Muslims were driven out of Spain. And that consequently... He has a responsibility before Allah to drive out those who drove him out. And this is why it's the same thing as in Israel. There's been a lot of this this week in Arabia, in, in, in Europe. We have also in Germany. Uh, just, uh, let's see, this was actually also today, January 25th, uh, a young uh, Palestinian Muslim gentleman lunged at horrified passengers on board the train from Kiel to Hamburg in Germany and he uh, actually stabbed two people to death and left seven others injured. Uh, obviously the police are looking for his motive as well. That It's that sudden jihad syndrome, man. It's which is strikes, strikes, rain. Oh, you're, you're random, 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 random follower, Hamid. Your uh, echo was back there, I think. Let's hope it doesn't keep up. But hey, hey, yeah, hey, maybe, hey. maybe what? Maybe it was my camera after all. all. And if they hear, they hear the echo, or if it's just you, can yeah, anybody guess, hear the hear echo, echo, or is it just me? Do you hear me echo? Yes or no? It's a little strange little like. stutter, more of a uh, more of a stutter effect. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's we we don't we don't we don't with settings at all. Once they they work, and then like random stuff happens. Yeah, it's the gin, David. The gin have figured us out. This. Uh, yeah, yep, they're saying echo. There we go. That was you go, the you, first you go, one. You go, you go ahead and talk. Talk. Maybe it'll fade because it fade, faded, and maybe it'll fade out. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and talk, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> we now, got another. Now, uh, you, you, you should uh, ask, ask here an echo with you, you as well as just me. Hey, uh, did you hear that, ladies and gentlemen? We have from David. The Davids ask if uh, there's an echo on my side or just on his. I don't believe there's an echo on my side, but maybe it's just me. Because I don't believe David hears it either. But uh, could you tell us? Epic echo. That's very nice. Well said. Uh, yes, echo. We're looking for a motive okay. for this echo, and once we okay, find so it, that's just me apparently, right? So that yes. that that leaves been the option. You could you could get and continue you uh, with this show, and will probably not want want to be a distraction. Or 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 we could scratch it, and then then we'll shoot, and then go again tomorrow or Friday. Yeah. Friday. You. What do you think, folks? That's no good without David. So uh, shall we just reconvene tomorrow night? Hoping that we have fixed the problem in the meantime. Let's see what uh -huh. the... Uh... 
check, check, what? From galleries. I think what that could, that could possibly It's very strange. It's a little bit of static and a little bit of a stutter. I have not touched, touched anything. And it's because of my crap, crap camera. No, I hooked the crap cam camera up. But the audio is from a, a world in a road mic or so. It's, it's got, can't be the mic. Got, got to be the computer. Can't be the mic. Oh, yeah, see, see? He's, got, he's got the mic. He's got the same mic. Mic. Okay. Uh, I guess we'll, uh... Well, some people, some are saying, people keep are saying keep going. going. Some people... Say keep going, telling something. Say tomorrow, good. David, uh, you want to uh, reboot and come back and join us, and I'll tell some jokes and do some juggling in the meantime. Want me to reboot, reboot right now? Oh yeah, we'll we'll give that a shot. All right, we will. I I will try to uh, sign off. Um, I'll probably shut my entire entire computer down, and then. Uh, but you go ahead. I'll I'll shut my entire computer down, then start up up, and if it doesn't solve the problem, then we we can. Okay, but we'll be here. I'll keep going. Don't leave, ladies and gentlemen. As a matter of fact, if you have questions, uh, this is a good time. Ask me anything. I might even answer. Uh, in the meantime, though, I will tell you about another case in Germany where in Frankenthal, in Rhineland Palatinate, a gentleman last October was screaming Allahu Akbar, as is, is, as is his wont, and uh, <clears throat> he deliberately wanted to stab people with his knife. He said that he did it because he wanted to kill German men. Now, once again, we got to wonder, you know, what is it that would motivate somebody to want to do such a thing? Why would somebody come to Germany? And presumably most people think that uh, you're coming as a grateful refugee. Uh, most people, that is, the uh, people who welcome these refugees, they maintain the idea that the refugees are glad to have been welcomed. And ordinarily, of course, that's been the case. When there have been refugee movements of various peoples around the world in the past, it's been a matter of immense gratitude for on the part of the refugees. This is the first time that the world is dealing with a massive number of refugees who don't actually have any gratitude or even respect for the people in the host country. And of course, the obvious reason for that is because they're coming with a theology that teaches them that the people in the host country are the most vile of created beings, as the Quran says in chapter 98, verse 6, that the... Uh, the the um <laughs> i gotta deal with this here uh are you going to make the quran part two the first quran is a little lacking um the quran uh the critical quran is available now it is what the quran says i would love to be able to change what the quran says but to the dismay and rage of the islamic apologists the critical Quran actually just says what the Quran says. And it doesn't sugarcoat it. It doesn't whitewash it. It doesn't mislead. Unlike most of the common translations in the, that are available in English nowadays. Uh, jihad issues in Scotland? Yeah, um, I don't have any on hand right at the moment. But uh, certainly, yes, there has been and will be jihad activity in Scotland. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, I was thinking actually about, uh, in, in connection with this, uh, writing a book about Islamic eschatology and comparing it to Christian eschatology. That might happen. I'm not sure that's going to happen. Um, but, uh, we'll see. In any case, the, uh, authorities in regard to the refugees are likely completely baffled that they have these refugees coming into the country and then the refugees are not being loyal, peaceful, beautiful citizens of their new country. I mean, obviously, I guess some of them are, but the fact that the refugees all over Europe are responsible for a tremendous amount of crime and a tremendous amount of terror activity to a much greater percentage than the native population 
The authorities are completely baffled by this, and yet the answers are quite clear and easy. So let's see if our friend David can be heard better. Good evening, David, and welcome back. Yo, how's it sound? That sounded great. That sounded we'll terrific. See. We'll see if it lasts. Yes, indeed. Meanwhile, we have a negative review here of the Critical Quran. What a lousy book. No plot. Stupid characters. <laughs> 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 Lame dog. You got, you, got a screen, you got to screenshot that one and share that on Twitter. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a beautiful thing. Hey, K Carol, go share that on Amazon. But, but be sure to give it five stars, but share that out. Hey, Carol, Carol, say something like, uh, uh, give it five stars, say how disappointed you are because of all those reasons, but say it's got a lovely cover, so you're giving it five stars. Yes. All right. Uh, I suppose the biggest story this week, David, and we better get to it before the technical, before the gin get us again. Uh, the biggest you see? story. <laughs> you see? The power of Allah. He gave you an echo. <laughs> Like Muhammad in the cave. Yes, that's right. Now, uh, the big story is the Quran burning in Sweden. And what is remarkable, there are several aspects of this story, Dave. And one of them is, of course, that Rasmus Paludan, the Danish politician who burned the Quran, quite cogently and reasonably pointed out that... If he had burned a hundred Bibles, if he had burned a hundred Torah scrolls, there would be nobody saying he needed to be arrested or killed or silenced in any way. It would be stoutly defended as a matter of the freedom of expression. But when it comes to the Quran, suddenly all the rules are different. Is that not correct? That is, uh, that is absolutely correct. And th there's the additional, there's the additional um, problem of massive hypocrisy. I mean, when Muhammad conquered Mecca, he went to the Kaaba, took all their, took the idols and walked around stabbing them in the eyes and, and uh, smashing them with a stick. He showed utter contempt for the religious beliefs of the polytheists of Mecca. So, so there's always this issue of respect our religion even though we have nothing but contempt for every uh, other religion and what you'll what you'll find is it's very interesting because every time you have one of these incidents someone in this case someone burns a quran the response is but we would never do that with anyone else's religion it's like where have you been for 14 centuries robert um it, it's been a while since i've read the the history of jihad your your book um, you know, I, I read in like Sahih al-Bukhari and so on, where <clears throat> Muhammad is smashing people's idols. Um, we we uh, hopefully there aren't there aren't any kids watching, but we have people like Abu Bakr who, right there in the presence of Muhammad, um, said to one of the polytheists, "Why don't you go? I'll, I'll say it nicely in case there are kids watching. Go perform oral sex on your goddess." Right? That's how they talk to people. And then I seem to recall from your book the history of jihad things like smashing the idols of hindus and then sprinkling the pieces on the ground around the mosque so that they could walk on them as they're walking mm -hmm. to the mosque showing their dominance and yet somehow we get to someone burning a quran and it's what are you doing it's a, well, we believe in respecting everyone's religion even though we call you the worst of creatures what's going on here a great deal of it i would submit to you my friend is cowardice that the international bodies, the UN and so on, that are now condemning Rasmus Paladon for daring to burn a Quran, <clears throat> they would actually be the first in line to commend somebody who burned a Bible for expressing his thoughts about the uh, teachings of Christianity. They would be first to defend the various blasphemous artworks that got awards, remember, 
You know, it's not just that somebody put a crucifix in a jar of urine, but it got a grant from the National Endowment of the Humanities, I believe it was, because it was such great art. <laughs> and nobody uh, was saying, you know, you really have to respect the Christians and not do this. And it's solely the respect that comes from the point of a gun. As in, uh, <clears throat> in Bob Dylan's famous and award-winning movie, Masked and Anonymous, when uh, his character actually says to an armed guard, I got a lot of respect for a gun. And that's really all that's going on here. These people that are uh, professing their respect for Islam and their horror at the burning of the Quran in Sweden, they don't have any respect for Islam. They just got a lot of respect for a gun. Or a knife. Or a bomber screaming, Allahu Akbar. Or for the praise they get on Twitter when they say, "Oh, we condemn this," you know, you know, it's you know, it's weird because I would ordinarily be on the side of the critics of you know book burning and so on. I would normally be on the side that says, "Come on, that's a really lame." Yeah, way I'm not. A, I'm not a book criticize. Fan. Yeah, even even the the cartoon <clears throat> controversy and cartoon drawing and stuff like that. No, ordinarily I would be like, "Come on, that's a that's these are really low, stupid ways of criticizing something." Until you get to, we're going to slaughter you if you do this, and then it's like, well. Darn, now we have to do this stuff because mm. otherwise you conclude that you can get whatever you want by threatening to brutally murder people. And so whenever you say, hey, if you're going to do this, we're going to brutally, you know, we're going to br brutally murder you in the name of Allah. Well, now we now people have to do this because um, because otherwise it teaches you the message that you can get what you want through violence. And we don't want that message. And that's the real problem with people who blast the book burner who is simply responding to people who say they're going to kill you for making fun of their book you you go after them what you're you're actually reinforcing the idea that if you want to get your way you do it through threats and violence and then exactly. you side with the people who you side with the people who say they're going to slaughter everyone um who who does this and um and it's just uh i mean are, are you really this stupid but so so notice everyone um, it, it comes down to us because you can't count on journalists and politicians or anyone to point out the obvious. It has to be us. So probably, probably in a little while, I'll probably put it somewhere like on Twitter or something like that. I'll start, get, I'll start giving the hadiths, right? I'll start posting screenshots of the hadith in English and Arabic where Muhammad goes around stabbing the eyes of their idols and so on. And guys, take, take a copy that, copy the picture. And then wherever you see people saying uh we condemn blah 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 in, just instantly say so do you also condemn muhammad for you know uh stabbing the idols of the meccans with a stick do you also condemn muhammad and what watch them watch it suddenly oh but it's a different culture who are we to judge <laughs> freaking cowards man bunch of cowards man cowardice is the real pandemic in the world today that uh, is the real that that have you have i that, have you trademarked that one? I ought to, yeah. You should. You should. That should be your. That should be your. Uh, your tagline: "Cowardice is the real pandemic." Cowardice is the real pandemic. Bumper stickers should be issued. <laughs> anyway, uh, we got Miguel Angel Moratinos. He is the high representative of the UN Alliance of Civilizations, Senor Miguel Angel Moratinos. Y Miguel Ángel Moratinos nos dijo, while the high representative stresses the importance of upholding the freedom of expression as a fundamental human right, he also emphasizes that the act of Quran burning amounts to an expression of hatred towards Muslims. And we cannot have that. It is a disrespectful and insulting to the adherents of Islam and should not be conflated with freedom of expression. Now, the problem with that, obviously, is when you start saying that you're all for the freedom of expression and it's a fundamental human right, except that it should be eliminated in certain instances, then you're not really for the freedom of expression as a fundamental human right. Either you are for it or you are not. It is just like being pregnant or not. You can't really say, well, 
I am pregnant, but there's not going to be any child uh, because I'm not really pregnant. You're entering into the realm no, of right, incoherence see, here. Yes, no, sir? you're no, you're no. You don't re, you don't realize what world we're in, Robert. I can identify yeah. as pregnant. But I can identify as pregnant. <laughs> not, yeah, you know, I've I, I've forgotten how crazy things have changed. Stop. Things have changed. Yes, you're you're, yes. So, you're talking you're talking twenty years ago, man. We're in twenty twenty two now. I'm I'm an old man, David. I can't move with the times that quickly, especially when it's moving from sanity to insanity. But Miguel Angel Moratinos. He, uh, his, his statement, nonetheless, I know this is an age of absurdity and an age of contradiction, but he is totally incoherent here. He, he cannot uphold the, uh, the freedom of expression as a fundamental human right and then say, but you can't burn the Quran. And he also cannot assume that the burning of the Quran is an expression of hatred toward Muslims. Nobody... Nobody, David, nobody in this entire controversy, and there have been foreign ministries all over the world calling in the Swedish ambassador and, and, and uh, yelling at the Swedes, and even the prime minister of Sweden condemned Rasmus Paladon for burning the Quran. Not a single person said, well, you know, I can see why somebody might not like the Quran. I can see that a book that teaches that I'm the most vile of created beings because I don't believe what's in it and that I should be made war against, I should be fought until I submit and accept the hegemony of this system that hates me and holds me in contempt. Nobody said anything like that. Nobody said, oh, there have been 40,000 jihad terror attacks around the world since 9-11. Maybe some people don't like the fact that all of them were inspired by the Quran. It's all just supposedly some gratuitous hatred. Yeah, and I mean, j just imagine a very commonsensical <clears throat> response. Um, ah, he burned a book. So what? Get over it. Yeah, it's not like there are no other copies. I, I, yeah, I, so I got like thirty back behind me. Yeah, I, I've got, I've got pile, I got piles of them too. And yeah. uh, if you wanted more, maybe Uthman shouldn't have burned them all to cover up the differences. <laughs> That was the that was the that was the original burn the Quran day, ladies and gentlemen. The original burn the Quran day was Uthman burning all the Qurans because burning every phys physical copy of the Quran because there were so many differences in them. Yep. And and they were they were, and they were worried about wars breaking out between the the various uh, factions who adhered to different Qurans. So Say we just have to burn this all and start over from scratch. He was right about the burn it all part, but anyway. Uh, yeah, it, it'd, be, it'd be funny if this politician was like, what? I just, I'm reading about Uthman and uh, <laughs> he's, he's my hero. And, and guys, guess what? Because of the, because of the different Kiarat in different parts of the world, just looks like we just got to burn them all and start over again. I mean, pick one mm -hmm. and we'll burn all the rest. Start with the critical I mean, Quran. He could be like, he could be like, oh, I'm going with the wash. This one's not going to work. I'm going to burn it. <laughs> all right. Oh, by the way, uh -huh. that would be brilliant. That would be brilliant, Robert. Hmm. What's that? If, 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 he, if people like this started saying, wait a minute, Uthman burned all the Qurans to cover up the differences. And yet here we are, 14 centuries later, and there are all these differences in different parts of the world. You could play clips of Sheikh Yasser Qadi and uh, Shabir Ali admitting that there are different Qurans used in different parts of the world. That's it. And then, you could, and then the dude could say, um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to use one Quran from now on and burn all the others. And the only one we're using is the critical Quran. And that is the one Quran that we're all going to use now. And all others have to be destroyed. Not according to me, according to the rightly guided Caliph Uthman. Yep. Can't argue with him. All right. Let's see. Lots more to go here, David. Let's see what we got. Uh, let's go to the dumb infidels because there are plenty more of them. As always, they are in such abundant supply. Allah must really love stupid infidels because he makes so very many of them. Okay, so we have, uh, oh, also in connection with the Quran burning, we have the president of Turkey, the uh, eminent Recep Tayyip Erdogan, saying that he's going to uh, oppose Turkey, uh, Turkey is going to oppose Sweden entering NATO. Sweden applied to enter NATO 
a few uh, months ago. And Turkey has been holding it up with all sorts of conditions. And the new condition is that Turkey has to fight against the enemies of Islam. And otherwise, he's going to not let them into NATO. So it's a very clever ploy, really, because Erdogan is saying, yeah, it, NATO has to accept Sharia or we're not going to let in Sweden. And uh, wow. the Europeans are probably dumb enough to fall for it. Yeah, they are dumb, aren't they? Yes. And, and I, I think I speak on behalf of everyone in NATO when I say, uh, who needs Sweden or Turkey? Right? Indeed. I mean, I mean, let's face it. The, when you say, hey, you're messing with NATO, you're really saying you're messing with the United States and all the countries that we've made an alliance with so we can put our military bases there. That's what you're really saying. Not saying good, not saying good or bad, but the, the idea that now you have to be uh, <laughs> pro-Sharia to be in there, I'd say... Uh, yeah, well, may, yeah. May, maybe like may, maybe much like the United Nations, NATO has just run its course, Robert. I don't. Yeah, I uh, I certainly agree with that idea, but nobody's listening. Um, yeah, see, meanwhile, come, people pe people come up with this great idea for a bunch of uh, nations to be aligned around some common purpose, but then over time, any sort of common purpose goes bye bye out the window, and then <clears> someone <throat> injects some horrible purpose into there. And then the organization becomes, you know, the world def global defender of this horrible purpose. And that just seems to happen. No, 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 notice, notice, no matter what the organization is, someone always wants to inject the Sharia into it and then make it the defender of Sharia. What the heck is that, man? Well, they're clever. They never miss a trick. <clears throat> Got to hand it to them. All right. Uh, meanwhile, we have the usual rage from various Islamic countries over the burning of the Quran. The foreign ministry of Pakistan said this senseless and provocative Islamophobic act hurts the religious sensitivities of over 1.5 billion Muslims around the world. Every last Muslim is hurt today, David. And well, so... Well, the, the, as we pointed out, the, the Quran calls Jews, Christians, and other non-Muslims the worst of creatures. So that would... Uh, offend the feeling that would hurt the feelings of pretty much everyone else in the world. So, uh, what 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 should what should Muslims do? Should should they change their on or should they just say you know too bad or something like that? Because that that's what I that's what I don't that's what I don't get when it's when it's their hurt feelings. Then the entire world is supposed to rally around them and protect them. And so when it's everyone else's hurt feelings, it's you know who cares? Shut up! We'll kill you. <laughs> well, that's what comes from believing that you're the best of people and you're dealing with the most vile of created beings. Obviously, the best of people deserve better consideration than the most vile beings. It's a very simple equation, really. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, this uh, gentleman, um, Ramazan Ezel. Ramazan Ezel is the head of the Turkic World Council. Uh, Turkic World Youth Council, excuse me, and that is not a uh, an inconsiderable organization. He has 511 followers on Twitter. No, I'm sorry, 511,000 followers. Oh, I on thought Twitter. you were saying 511. I was like, what? <laughs> no, he's got he's got half a million followers on Twitter, and you can see his charming visage there. Uh, in place of mine. He's uh, got that determined and uh, uh, angry stare that is so I often to, common. I, I have to point out the beard and the dude always wearing a suit. I wonder mm -hmm. where he got that idea from, Robert. It's... <laughs> yeah, he, he, you got to wonder. Even use, he even uses the same the same tie knot as you. Oh, I, mean, I tell you, he's he's probably studying all my moves, but. He's very angry, and he actually tweeted openly. He tweeted on, uh, uh, tweeted on. Uh, let's see, but today is Wednesday, so it was Saturday, I believe. He said, a bastard burned the Quran today in Sweden. Why are you silent as Muslims? If I catch this rascal who burned the Quran, I will burn him alive. 
That's what he said. He, he, he said Look I, at him. He's going to burn Rasmus Paladam alive. You, you can see. see. He's going he's to get him. You can see it. Yeah. What what'd you call his organization? The Turkic Youth? World Youth what? Council. Turkic World Youth Council. And he has, has five, the same 511, kind of ring. It has the same ring as like the Hitler Jungen. You know what I mean? The Hitler Jungen. Yeah, that's true. I'm sure there are quite a lot of similarities. I bet they have very similar views about Jews. Meanwhile, the UN, <clears throat> this is a good one here. I should get this picture too here, David. Really, I got to think more visually, David. This is a visual medium. Well, and... I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I mean, I don't even, I can't even tell where you're going with this because what could possibly go wrong with the UN? The UN, here are a bunch of, you see this picture? Here are a bunch of UN officials. And they are posing happily in front of the Taliban flag. Well, they're posing all right. That, <laughs> that is the particular version of the Shahada flag, the flag bearing the Islamic profession of faith. But these stupid infidels, uh, that is the, uh, the symbol above that. It makes it very clear. This is the Taliban, the new national flag of Afghanistan, and there they are. They're very happy to be associated with the Taliban. Can you imagine, though, if uh, there were, if, if they had a, if, if for some reason you and I walked in and there was a cameraman, these guys would be absolutely frightened to get in a picture with us and be running in the other You see? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Can't, can't have us. Yep. You can't have and, and, foes of jihad. Isn't that, isn't that, I mean, gosh, isn't that amazing? Like, the Taliban. I, mean, I, I just I just shared, I think, I don't know if, was that last night or early this morning or something like that, shared a video of a little Afghan girl, because they're not allowed to go to school anymore, posting a video, and she's just telling other Afghan girls to, you know, hope, hope for the future and try to learn on your own at home however you can until the day when you can rise up. And meanwhile, the rest of the world is, hey, how can we be buddies with the guys who are doing this to girls? Yep. By the way, that's not all these dudes are doing to those young girls. That's true. Just so y'all know. Well, they're just imitating Muhammad. True. Canada, meanwhile, is bringing Jihadi oh, Jack. Oh. You heard about this? Canada. Canada. Oh, yeah. Canada. Yeah, it's up in Canada, eh? So, uh... They had a meeting at Tim's, you know, eh? and they uh, decided to bring Jack Letts home. Jack Letts is actually a British citizen. You may remember Jack Letts, David. Jack Letts is Jihadi Jack. And uh, he is a convert to Islam from Britain. Who uh, He went to join ISIS. And when he joined ISIS... He called himself an enemy of Britain. There's Jack. Jack making the one finger ISIS salute, showing his allegiance to Tawheed, the oneness of Allah. And uh, he's a uh, jihadi who is implicated in numerous crimes of the jihadis, and the British will not let him back in. But Canada. Shame on them. Canada will. First, first that. First, what's your face, and now this dude. Yeah, Shamima Bagoom. But it was great. Those British are cold as ice, man. Yeah, yeah, it's terrible. But the Canadians are letting him back into Canada. There you go. He ain't They're even nicer. Canadian. More polite. It's incredible. Well, I mean, you're t you're talking Canada, Robert. They'll probably elect him prime minister over there. Indeed, but he'll have to run against that guy. Uh, what the heck is his name? Somebody help me out with his name. The jihadi who was in Guant Guantanamo, and he said he was mistreated and tortured in Guantanamo. And even though the U.S. government has very stoutly denied this and uh, doesn't torture people in Guantanamo because the, the public uh, would be too angry if they did, he was given $10 million by Justin Trudeau. And so he is now a happy rich man in Canada. What the heck fund is his, his whole name? campaign? I yeah, don't know. He, he can fund his whole campaign. Though. And Robert, Robert, they don't have to compete against each other. There are enough government posts for all these jihadis to take over. Yeah. 
Oh man, and I'm Canada. <clears throat> Canada, if you don't let them. Do you sound like Islamophobes? Whoops, wrong one. Here we go. Is Spencer the guy who doesn't believe Muhammad existed? Yeah, that's me. Read my book, Did Muhammad Exist? I don't know. Is our debate on YouTube? We deba David and I debated this issue many years ago, back in like, I don't know, 1950 or something. Uh, we debated this, ago. and uh, we I should do that again. But yeah, when I'm yeah, referring to Muhammad get, saying something... I want to get crushed. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. When I'm referring to Muhammad saying something on this show, I want to make it clear. I don't believe Muhammad said anything. I don't believe there was a Muhammad. But Muslims believe there was a Muhammad, and they believe that the Hadith are the accurate records of what he said. And so when I'm just saying in shorthand, Muhammad said this or did this, it's I'm really saying Muslims believe... Muhammad said this or did this, but that's an argument for another day. Uh, so you it, can... it, would, it, would, it would be like uh, someone makes a movie and the movie's fiction and they have some fictional uh, character in there who's totally evil, but then they all think that it's real and so they all start proclaiming it and, um, and then you'd <clears> say, ah, but this person says this and this person says that when you're pointing out what they believe he said. Yeah, whereas, isn't there a movie... Whereas, there is a movie like that, isn't there? Galaxy is there, Quest? Isn't it oh, Galaxy yeah, yeah, Quest? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, hey, have you used the Galaxy Quest argument for No, my... I never the, thought of the, that the... until just now. That's it. Yeah, that, that's they actually it. take it seriously. Okay, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, in Galaxy Quest, ladies and gentlemen, these outer space beings, they, they see this cheesy TV show from, from America, and they think it's real. So they... Try, they, they, they contact the actors because they think that they are superheroes. And, uh, and they're, uh, yeah, and they're not. And, and by the way, for, in, in case anyone's, in case anyone's new here, I believe that there was a Muhammad and that there was, uh, tons of exaggeration and so on. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, when we're quoting stuff, I believe that actually goes back to Muhammad. With that said, I understand it's hard, it's hard to defend because, there's this big gaping hole where all this evidence should be about this dude. There's nothing. So it, is a, it is a problem. The gaping hole is specifically that in the century he's supposed to have lived in and done all this, the 7th century, there are only a few mentions of him, and none of them correspond to what we are told about him in the canonical Islamic stories that come from 200 years later. That's the big problem. Yeah, and 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 the and notice this wouldn't this wouldn't be a problem if you said, hey, there's some guy Muhammad, and he lived in this little village, and he taught some, you know, he he taught some things, and then his religion eventually exploded, something like that. Uh, there, you wouldn't expect to find much, right? Uh, but when the guy is supposedly going around conquering Arabia and challenging all these other. Um, He's challenging the Romans. He's challenging the Persians. Everyone's terrified of him. Everyone's heard that there's this real prophet. Uh, problem is, we have records from those times. No one's ever heard of this dude. So, yeah, one act. Uh, looks just one more, and then we'll actually get back to jihad. But uh, there's a very famous set of hadiths in which Muhammad writes letters to the world yep. leaders of the day, to Heraclius, the Roman emperor to Khosrau, the Persian king, and he tells them who he is and invites them to accept Islam. And then there are stories about Heraclius being deeply impressed, and he's going to go for it. He thinks Muhammad's the, the prophet, but then his, uh, his assistants get all upset and persuade him not to go through with it. Now, I just finished writing a book about the Byzantine Empire. It'll be out in a few months, and... Uh, I was very closely going back to the primary sources, the Byzantine chronicles of the period, all through the history of the Byzantine Empire, and all through the career of Heraclius, there is no indication whatsoever that he, not only that he got a letter from Muhammad, or that he ever heard of Muhammad. There is no indication in the Byzantine records that anybody knew anything about Muhammad until much later. Yeah, and so uh, everyone keep the 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 position that is completely nonsensical and that is totally at odds 
with all the evidence is the standard Muslim view, where all these sources are completely reliable, at least if they're Sahih and so on. So they take all these things seriously. Uh, for the rest of us who are actually looking at the historical evidence, you you either have Robert's position that Muhammad didn't actually exist, that these things were invented later, or, or hey, you know, there, there was a Muhammad and blah, 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 but a ton of this has been massive. His significance was massively exaggerated and lied about. Um, those, are the, those are the positions you could try to defend. But I see somebody saying the debate is on YouTube, so give that a watch, folks. It was a lot of fun. And it's what was really fun about it, from my standpoint anyway, is that I've only otherwise only ever debated Muslims. And this was so refreshing to debate David because it was actually dealing with rational arguments that were on topic. Every other debate I've ever had with Muslims, it's all... You're destroyed! You got <laughs> yeah. destroyed, boy! It's me! <laughs> yes, yes, you're, totally destroyed. You're finished! But you're it was finished, all just brother. ad hominem abuse or off-topic rants or deflection and lies. That's hey, basically Robert, all it was. Every last hey, time. We, sh we should debate it again, but then the entire time I'll just call you an Islamophobe. That'd be <laughs> awesome, wouldn't it? Yeah, that would be that would be just like all the Islamic debates. <laughs> yeah, we what we should do is have a debate as if we were debating like the people we debate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be know? awesome. And we just, just insult uh... we just insult each other the entire time. <laughs> I can't believe I'm talking to this man. He, he, he doesn't know the most basic things. A third grader could know what he knows. Anyway. Classic. <laughs> or, <laughs> or we should do or we should do two back to back. One as ourselves and two as <laughs> Yes. Yeah, two they, as the, the, <laughs> the, the 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 debate and then the debate Islamic remix. I like this. Dawa style. Yeah, it's gonna be great. All right, let's uh, do some, you know, this is supposed to be jihad. We should do some jihad. Yeah, what uh, are you doing? You're talking about... Yeah, it's terrible. I got distracted comments. Quit by... Comments, quit distracting, uh, Robert. Quit comments. distracting, Robert, with these comments. Belgium. Brussels train station. You know, it's funny how these things travel in packs, David. Have you noticed that? We had the, the guy on the train in Germany, yep. and he's he's attacking people. And this is a guy in the train station in Brussels... And he's attacking people. He slashed commuters at the train station while screaming, what? Uh, Allahu Akbar, <clears throat> just like his other buddy. Yeah, unfortunately, once again, no innovation, no bida, no uh, new ideas. Yeah, no they, can't they, we all they, just they, get along. And we've talked about this before that like as soon as like one person crashed a truck into a crowd then like there was this series of them where everyone gets the same idea now it's ah, i stabbed a guy in a train station oh let's all do the same thing by the way you want to know how weird people are so that was yeah. that was one of the few uh terrorist attacks even though they happen every day it's one of the few i heard about so i tweeted i tweeted um this how did I put it? I said, this terrorist attack in Brussels is as revolting as the sprouts for which the city was named. And then people started messaging me defending Brussels sprouts. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to start myself. <laughs> They're like, no, Brussels sprouts are okay. And I was like, there's a terrorist attack and you're defending Brussels sprouts? Yep. Well, it's their claim to fame. I mean, it's either that or the EU. I would defend Brussels sprouts over the EU. Anyway, uh, let's go around the world, David, and hit some of the jihad hotspots. Democratic Republic of the Congo, uh, the Allied Democratic Forces, which despite its name is a Ugandan jihad group dedicated to establishing a caliphate in East and Central Africa. They raided a village in Eastern Congo in... Uh, Beni, which is a jihadi hotspot, killed 20-some people. In Turkey, there were demonstrations. Th tens of thousands of people 
the the crowds are absolutely staggering massive beyond measure and they are protesting against all the people who hijack their religion of peace and commit acts of violence in its name uh but actually in all seriousness you know what they were protesting david they were protesting against the quran burning in sweden but what's interesting is something they said while they were marching around in turkey protesting they said europe's fear is muhammad's army europe's fear is muhammad's army reminded me of muhammad i have been made victorious through terror mm-hmm. and uh all the apologist clowns who say oh no that means just the fear of god the awe in the face of the majesty of allah but obviously the turks here they don't have that idea at all this was also i i should note this was in the city the turkish city of batman it's the name of the town yeah that's interesting because i'm the robin to your batman um uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you know what? You know what's stupid. It's like one. Think about how delusional that is. I mean, is anyone scared of Muhammad's army because of Islam's impact on science? Um, you, they're never an advanced army, right? Um, we're concerned about stupid politicians and stupid journalists and stupid educators and stupid entertainers, dumb, collectively known as dumb infidels, who keep defending the ideas of an illiterate Arabian caravan robber um, and blocking all criticism of his ideas. If we didn't have that issue, no one would. I mean, who's scared of the armies of Islam? What 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 army of Islam couldn't be completely crushed by any modern developed um, nation? Just delusional. With that said, people are defending Brussels sprouts over in the chat. And I just have to point out, ladies and gentlemen, my problem is not with Brussels sprouts. My problem is with vegetables in general. So just clear. All right, but go ahead. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, Jackie Corley in the comments reminds me about Armenia. I don't actually have any stories queued up about Armenia. That's the problem with these. Uh, it's an ongoing story. And so it's, it's, I should have remembered to get a news item about it. But uh, I just go and gather individual news items about specific incidents. And what we have in Armenia in Artsakh, which is an Armenian enclave that is within the territory of Azerbaijan, the uh, Azeris are now blockading Artsakh, or Nagorno-Karabakh, as they call it. And uh, the Armenians have been trapped in there without supplies, without ways to get food, without ways, without electricity and so on, for over 40 days now. And it's a tremendous humanitarian crisis And it is solely because, just as David was saying earlier about Nigeria and about other places in the world, Artsakh is a Christian area in the middle of a majority Muslim area. And so the obvious idea here is to destroy it and to destroy Armenia as a whole. Because if you look at a map of Asia Minor and Central Asia, you have Turkey, and then you have the sea, and then you have Armenia and Azerbaijan, and then you get into the Turkic areas where the Turks came from originally, Turkmenistan and so on. Armenia is the only non-Muslim area in that whole stretch. So if you destroy Armenia, you could have a massive Turkish state or caliphate stretching all the way across Central Asia, all the way to Istanbul. But Armenia is in the way. So you sh- please uh, keep them in mind, pray for the people in Artsakh, and also that there would be some international authorities with spine, which is very rare, who would take up the cause of the Armenians and act to end this blockade. Uh, it's all about Islam. Nobody will talk about that. Nobody will talk about jihad. But really, there isn't any other reason for the Azeris to be treating the uh, Armenians in this territory in this manner. And, I mean, of, of all the groups in the world that could say, hey guys, uh, 
should probably be taking care of us, uh, should probably be watching out for what people do to us. Seems like the Armenians would have a pretty good claim to to that. You know, Indeed. given the given that whole genocide thing back in the day, which it's was like, also hey, jihad. Yeah, so we had this we had this genocide back in the day, and now there are people who want the genocide again. Uh, what are you politicians and journalists worried about? Ah, Quran burner in Sweden, mm-hmm. bunch of morons. Indeed. In Pakistan, uh, there was a Christian who was tending his guava farm, and uh, three Muslims entered the farm and began destroying his fruit. And uh, they began verbally abusing him, calling him a filthy Christian, and saying, how dare you prohibit us from taking the fruit on this farm, because obviously it belongs to them. They have a right to take what belongs to Christians because the Quran says that the Christians have to pay the jizya with willing submission and feel themselves subdued. Ultimately, they uh, killed this man and warned his family not to go to the police or they would kill them as well. That was in Turkey. Oh, That's been a, yeah. we, 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 we've heard we've heard we've heard that a, a ton usually usually in Pakistan where we've heard that right the the uh, the whole uh, you know yeah we just raped your daughter but you shut up about it or you know we'll just slaughter you all and then Christians have to keep have to actually keep quiet about that you imagine how much that must suck like someone can walk up and rape your daughter and you have to keep your mouth shut because if you don't like the whole the whole town will just slaughter you yeah Crazy but stuff. they don't have any recourse because the authorities yep. are all on the side of the people who do this to them. Uh, let's see. In France, France is always ever present. We have not heard from France. France is the France is the Canada of Europe. Ha! Ha! They would be very offended. They would say, "No, Canada is the France of North America, or at least Quebec." Anyway, mm-hmm. yes. Um, the uh, yeah, you know, I was up there. I was up there in Montreal a few years ago, and this uh, this homeless guy comes up to me begging, and he's speaking French. Now I don't know French, so I just stood there and 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 he said what he said, and I smiled at him. And after a while, he saw that nothing was going to happen beyond that, and he went away. And I thought, why are you why are you begging on the street, man? You know French. You ought to be able. To, Go make something of your life. Not you know. I I don't I don't speak French. It's amazing place Quebec. There's so many people who speak French there. They're hey, very, hey, very uh, learned uh, people. Along these same lines, um, I uh, I've only been, well, I've been to Canada twice. One was flying to Europe, and there was a layover in France. I mean, a layover in Canada, and then flying back, there was a layover in Canada. And uh, weird thing is, if you're flying to Europe. Even though the layover is in Canada, you're not technically in Canada in that area of the airport. So you're, I don't know how it works, but somehow you're not actually counted as in Canada. On the way back, then if you're coming from Europe, then technically you're in Canada when you get there. And I, they were actually waiting for me when I got off the plane, the authorities, because I'm a convicted felon. So they were waiting for me and they took me, <laughs> they oh, took me into custody. They took me into custody and they told me, since you're a convicted felon, you're not allowed in this country. Uh, you'd have to fill out all sorts of paperwork and so on. And th- then I just had to sign something saying that I know the rules now. And if, they, if I ever come to the country again, I'll be instantly arrested and so on. Wow. And then they have like a, they have a, an armed soldier escort me <laughs> to, to, to my, to my gate where, you know, then I, uh, then I get to get out of that, uh, out of that hell hole. But I'm just thinking how, <laughs> so wait a minute. So I'm a convicted felon from back in the 90s, and they're still coming at me with like an armed soldier and stuff if I go there. But if you're a jihadi and you joined million ISIS, dollars. you joined ISIS, even if you're not from Canada, even yeah. if you're not from yeah. Canada, hey, let, let's get all these terrorists back here because Canada, we're so, we're so open-minded about, you know, terrorists. Yeah, I was speaking so in what? Toronto a few years ago. So I flew up to Toronto and... 
there's people there. The, the people organizing the event are there waiting for me, and I can't get out. They kept me and questioned me for three hours in the Toronto airport because I'm a dangerous Islamophobe. And uh, <laughs> that's Canada, man. It's crazy. <laughs> if, you, if you had slaughtered a bunch of people in the name of Allah, they'd be rolling out a carpet for you. Oh, yeah. I'd get $10 million. But anyway. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't, it, isn't it weird? Like, like, you atheists who are watching, how do you not believe in, like, a spiritual realm? Like, I, mm. I can't imagine people being this stupid. There has to be, like, dark spiritual forces at work because you, mm. you, you can't actually be this dumb. And yet they are. Yep. Well, you know, there's, a, I think, a strong delusion that people are believing nowadays. I've heard something about that. But anyway, mm -hmm. that's yet another topic. Uh, before we go, David, we're coming up to an hour of sorts here, although it's been fraught with difficulties. But uh, nonetheless, I did introduce France. And so this gentleman went to the, how do you say this? N-A-N-T-E-S, folks. Nantes, Nantes, non who knows? Is it France? It's French, yeah. I mean, yeah, it could be full fifth, full fifth. There's just no <laughs> correspondence between the letters they use and the. So anyway, he went to the School of Architecture of Nantes, and he uh, wrote a letter to the school, sent it to the school, and it says, "I declare war on you." I'd like to see that if he said jihad, but anyway, the the English translation, not okay. Thanks, not. I declare war on you, and yes, I will be hostile to you. I will be your worst enemy. All this will be judged before Allah, the Lord of the universe. Where did he get this idea, David? I thought it was a religion of peace. Must have got it from you. <laughs> That's it, man. Yeah, you know, there was a guy. There was this crazy guy 20-some years ago. I don't know if you ever encountered him. He's, he's dead now. I won't uh, drag his name into this. But he wrote actually online, and Care picked it up, that the people of the, of the Hamas jihadis were reading my books. And that's why they were going jihad. They were learning about Islam from me. Otherwise, it would have been, they would have been a completely peaceful and benign group. Uh, and, crazy and by world. the way... The They've tried it since then. There was some, uh, there was some, uh, I think it was the UK where some uh, jihadi was going to court and he said that, uh, he had oh, apparently yeah. said what, he had apparently said when he was testifying, uh, you know, and then I found all this stuff about jihad and blah, 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 blah. And I even saw that there were, there were, uh, there were others like David Wood and Robert Spencer who, who understood this. So it's not just, it's not just our guys making this stuff up. Any, anyone can see this and stuff. And then it gets reported. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Robert, Robert Spencer from Jihad Watch, blah, blah, blah. David Wood uh, is being cited by this Jihad. It's like, <laughs> he didn't not have the idea, and then he got it from us. He got the idea, then was like, oh, everyone can see this. Even non-Muslims can see this in the sources. So he's putting all this out to, to point out, hey, guys, I'm actually following my religion here. What's the yeah. takeaway? You see, <laughs> Robert Spencer, Robert Spencer and David Wood are giving people these ideas. Yeah, that the, yeah, the that's independent. Right. That's right. Yeah, the, jihadis uh, of the world. Jihadis of the world are going. You know, hey, we want to learn about Islam. Where are we going? Let's go to Jihad Watch. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's it's right there, right there in the name of the site, Jihad Watch. So, I mean, if we want to learn, we'll go there. <laughs> yeah, you know, I used to get that. Uh, it, it's been years now, but for for a while, it was daily. I would get several emails from guys saying, "I want to join the Jihad. How do I join the Jihad?" And I thought it was the craziest thing, but you know what's even crazier is that <clears throat> the I, I notified, uh, I was a dutiful American, and I notified the FBI, and I sent them all these messages, and regularly uh, met with these FBI agents. And then after Garland, when the it came out that the FBI had been egging on the jihadis who came to kill us all at the Garland event, Suddenly, as soon as that came out, all the messages stopped. And I've never gotten a message since then saying, I want to join the jihad. And I got to wonder, was this the uh, the FBI trying to set something up? I don't know. But they did warn me at one yeah. time, if you contact these people, you'll be an accessory to terrorism if you respond to them. And so I don't know if that was what the deal was, but it didn't work anyway. 
Come on, Robert. If you can't trust your own government, who can you trust? <laughs> yeah, you know, I get all these death threats. I showed some death threats a, a few months back on this show, and people said, why don't you tell the FBI? And I thought, well, they'll just give the guy my address. <laughs> <You know? laughs> the FBI is probably sending half of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's their jihad. What's yours? <laughs> that's it man uh i'll hit it tomorrow anyway this has been this week in jihad if there is any jihad in the coming week we might even be back then god willing but in the meantime be safe say your prayers understand where you are practice situational awareness and never ever give them an inch thank you <laughs>